the uh, yet, yet more demonstrations by activists, um, in this case, were told pro-Palestinian activists from Youth Demand, spray-painting Labour's party headquarters in central London with red paint, both inside and out. They call themselves a youth resistance campaign. They say they're fighting for an end to what they call genocide and demanding a two-way arms embargo in Israel and an end to oil and gas drilling. I like that they've got the UK thing in as well, Tom. Um, what do you make of these sorts of uh, protests and demonstrations? I've been fascinating, fascinated, as you suggested there, by how all of the issues are being put under one umbrella now. We also saw Greta recently kind of get into the Palestine issue in a big way, as if these things are any way connected. I'm sure we'll hear in a moment as to how they are intimately the staff, connected. Think. Maybe that might be it. But, um, you know, I mean, what, what is their beef with the Labour Party here? Because they are quite mildly supporting Israel in its fight against a genuinely genocidal foe in the form of Hamas. They're upset by that. I just don't personally understand it. But no, I know indeed. you're going to get Well, let's try and get to the bottom of it with my next guest, because joining me right now is an activist at Youth Demand, Chiara Sarti. Uh, good morning to you. Hi, Julia. Thank you for having me Well, on. thanks for joining us. You weren't actually at this protest yesterday. I suppose if you had no. been, you'd probably be in a prison cell, which you, you spent three, was it, three whole weeks in a prison cell um, after one of your last demonstrations with uh, Just Stop Oil. Um, uh, yeah. You were imprisoned after a march in London and also arrested in October for spraying King's College uh, with uh, orange paint. So you know what that's like. But um, what was the point of this protest yesterday? So I think today we're in agreement, Julia, that the like politicians in this country have no, we have no trust in them whatsoever. And the Labour is as failed as the opposition is the failed government in waiting and young people demand better. So we are demanding an arms embargo on Israel and we are demanding an end to new oil and gas, including those hundred oil and gas licenses that have been granted by the Conservatives. Uh, the oil and gas licenses, that is, I mean, I'm not quite sure that it relates to the Middle East and, and the Palestine and Gaza issue, but, but that you're just kind of throwing that in for good measure. No, not at all. They are, they are connected. The more you look at it, the, the more connections you find. We have Israel giving gas licenses off the coast of Gaza to BP to keep the UK on their side. We have the profits from uh, the North Sea oil fields going to fund uh, the oppression of uh, Palestinians in, in the West Bank. But ultimately, whichever way you cut it, our politicians are driving genocide. They are deeply complicit in this. They're complicit in, in, in genocide. I, mean, I have to say, and a lot of people are pointing out, they worry about whether or not your group, um, Youth Demand, is able to cope with the complexities of the Middle East political situation when you can't cope with the complexities of a simple address. Because although that was the building where Labour has their headquarters in, went in and spray-painted the ground floor, that's actually below the office of another uh, uh, organisation, and Labour are actually on the second floor. I mean, if you can't even master Google and what is the address for the Labour Party, um, what hope do you have for mastering the complexities of the Middle East? Well, I think this is really very simple. At the end of the day, we don't like seeing starving kids being bombed on the news and we can do, we're going to do everything it non-violently takes to put an end to that. You can do everything you can do. Um, why do you think that your demands should overtake um, the law um, and our democratic systems? Because there are plenty of people arguing within our democratic system, within Parliament, it's not sitting this week over Easter break, but um, a lot of MPs who are democratically elected are speaking out, other people going on largely peaceful demonstrations where they are making their case. There's no doubt that is having pressure on governments, not just here, but also in America and elsewhere in terms of their attitude towards Israel. Why do you have to resort to breaking the law and vandalism and criminal damage, not you personally, but your organisation, you support their actions, um, to make your point? Isn't this a little bit, look at me, look at me, rather than actually trying to help a single child starving right now in Gaza? Well, the fact of the matter is that the law is already being broken because genocide is illegal. There are 600 lawyers that have fact. written... No, 600 lawyers have written to well, the government... Well, 600 lawyers have said that, and I think 750 have written a counter letter pointing out the exact opposite. So it's not a fact, it's well, an opinion. Well, I know, I know the people opinion your age struggle with the difference between those two things, but fact and opinion are not the same thing. 
Yeah, this is the opinion of legal experts. And the opinion the of other legal experts is that it's not the case. Yeah, That's how it doesn't become service, a fact. Yeah, the civil service has threatened to walk out. Oh well, if if, the, oh, well, if the civil service have. And some members of the civil service who don't understand their job have threatened to walk out, yes? Again, doesn't make genocide yeah. a fact. Yeah. The, well, you're a the PhD court, student at Cambridge. Surely you understand yeah. these concepts. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that the World Court has ruled this a plausible case to answer Possible. for Israel. Possible. Yeah. Yes. And the day after, what did we do? We cut the aid to the main... Uh, Agency, the fund uh, that and gives why food did, to And why did the UK and many other countries do that? Do you remember? Yeah, based on like unsubstantiated allegations. That... Oh, so those aren't facts. Those are just. It's very. It's very difficult to know when 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 facts and opinions when when they collide, isn't it? Here's the thing, though. Again, you can be as concerned about this as as you clearly are, and many in your group are. I do wonder though why people are suddenly so concerned about all of a sudden in ongoing time people in Gaza, um, we're all concerned about innocent civilians losing their lives anywhere. Why is there not the same concern? Why have there not been these demonstrations, think, for instance, about Yemen, who faced uh, starvation? Children are starving. There's a report on the news this morning about it. Why, why not so concerned about, for instance, when President Assad was bombing the hell out of hun killing hundreds of thousands of his own people in, in Syria? Why, why uniquely is the concern for people in, Pal in Gaza, Palestinian people? Well, if you give me one hour on your show, we could do the tour of the world and talk about all the different ways in which we're bombing starving people. But no, but the, de if the I'm demonstrations. Here... Why are you doing a demonstration about this particular issue, but not others? Well, we have to pick our fights at the end of the day. And why do you pick the fight over this? Why is this the cause celeb for people of, or, 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 or on this side of the political argument? How the homes in Gaza have been bombed in the last six months, mm -hmm. it's beyond it's beyond description. Like it's it's a total violation of every single human value. If you're not on the on the streets with us, you basically have no values whatsoever. Okay, so I haven't gone on the streets to demonstrate against this, so I have no values. Yeah. And most of Pretty the people much. in this country have not have not gone on the streets to demonstrate against this. Many people in this country will agree with you, many would agree with me. I, I would argue that quite clearly. What happened on October the 7th, just, uh, just over six months ago, was the, a heinous, horrific uh, mass massacre by Hamas uh, forces and that Israel has a right of self-defence. And if Hamas hides themselves underneath the, uh, the, 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 uh, the civilian structures, schools, apartment blocks, hospitals and the like, those are legitimate targets. That is what international law says. Yeah, I don't think that four-year-olds are fighting Hamas war for them, so we maybe shouldn't bomb them. Uh, I well, know the, it sounds the, the, crazy, the, but... Children aren't the targets of those bombs. Hamas fighters are well, the targets of those bombs. And well, Hamas, choose to, Hamas chooses to hide behind children. It is Hamas. Well, do you, do you it, agree? Do you, OK, do you at least agree that a Hamas are putting Palestinian civilians, particularly children, in harm's way? Or do you not accept that? Yeah, maybe that is the case. Maybe. Why, why, why maybe? Yeah. I feel like we, need, we should be talking about genocide here because that's the... We are talking about genocide. Lasting... Yeah. That's, what you, that's yeah, yeah. the word you 30, choose 000... to use. I don't believe that what's been carried out by the Israeli army is genocide because it doesn't actually fit the basic dictionary definition of it. I think that the attempt... What Ham Hamas has within its own actual constitution the aim of the genocide of the Jewish people. Yeah, they're not really in any position to do that at well, the Well, they moment. were very much in a position to kill um, almost 1,200 uh, on, on October the 7th. And the point of the Israeli actions, and I don't support all of their actions uh, to date, but the result of their, the aim of their actions is to prevent that from happening again. And Hamas has said they will do October the 7th again on every occasion they get an opportunity. So why sh yeah. so you but you seem to have you seem to have more of a concern about Israel than you do about Hamas even though it is Hamas that has put the children in harm's way that you are claim to be concerned about Well we don't sell weapons to Hamas we sell weapons to Israel so we're calling for an arms embargo on Israel Okay right. do you know do you know what you, the you have of... said you don't support this right No don't support what what, what Israel has been doing to no, the No, I do support people. Israel. I don't support all of their individual actions, but I do support, okay. I do support Israel's... The 13,000... 
the 30,000 kids that have been murdered, do you support that? Right. Have you shed a single tear for what's been happening to the Palestinian people? No. One. I didn't shed a single tear, actually. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a ruthless old, old hack. I see this as a, news, as a news journalist. I think it's awful and terrible and, and, and horrible that any innocent person of any age, but particularly children, should die as a result of war. I also know that is the reality of war. And I don't think that one person's death is so much more awful because it happens in one country as opposed to another person's death in another country. But apparently, people like you think that one set of deaths matters a lot more than the others. Uh, no, not at all. I think 13,000 murder kids should be <laughs> enough to get everyone in this country to go to youdemand.org and sign up for action. OK, well, again, the use of the word murdered, murdered implies deliberate intent to kill those children. That is it not is what deliberate. the Israeli army... You think, you think the Israeli army is deliberately trying to target uh, Palestinian children? Yes. OK, do you have evidence for that? Extensive. There is, look at all the court filings for uh, the ICJ case that has been brought forward by South Africa. Look at what they have done, like, just last week, to seven, eight workers being bombed, and we're still yes. talking about this. Yes. Do you think they deliberately targeted those aid workers thinking they were aid workers? Yes. Yes. And, and that there would is work a clear out, and, system and that would work out for, well for aid Israel. workers to come through. So they deliberately well, thought... Well, it's self-evident it hasn't. Well, um, it's a genocidal war. They are, and they're going explicitly after, like, the life support system in Gaza. We've seen the flower massacre. They opened fire over 118 starving Gazans. I'm, like, I... I feel like none of us have emotionally connected with this situation here. Right? We're talking about this... I, I would have thought far too many inside. people have emotionally connected with it. What does spray-painting the outside of the building and the inside of and someone else's office of the, the opposition party in this country, possibly future government in the end of the year, what does spray-painting that with red paint, what does that actually achieve for any child currently hungry, sitting in a bombed-out house, or a refugee camp in Gaza. What does that actually achieve for that child? Other than well, you, you know, you getting on the telly and and getting to tell everyone what a wonderful person you are. No, it's got me on this show to say we need an arms embargo on Israel by yesterday. And what would the arms embargo achieve, given that less than 0.1% of the arms used by Israel come from Britain? It's not just the weapons in itself. It's also the parts and it's the software equipment, right? Mm -hmm. The Dutch have done it with the F-35 fighter jets. The the engines that we produce in this country power the fighter jets that mm -hmm. are scaring four-year-olds into having a heart attacks, right? The, <laughs> the, the, like the fighter jet that bombed the aid workers last week could have well been produced in the UK. Okay. Um, that is I, completely unacceptable. Carrie, it, it won't escape people's notice in terms of your your, your rather strong accent. She was saying, "Are you are you are you a British citizen?" No. Um, you're you're a PhD student here. Where, would you mind me asking where you're from? Uh, I was born and grew up in Italy. In Italy, I've been in the country. Um, again, a lot of people might be a bit thrown by the fact that you're coming here to this country. You're very welcome to study here and live here, obviously. Um, um, and everyone's entitled in this country to give their opinion, but that you're part of an organisation that commits criminal acts, dem making demands rather than trying to influence debate, making demands about how the government and how a possible potential future government should behave on international, in, in our foreign policy. Um, I mean, I mean this politely, but what the hell's it got to do with you? Well, if I didn't love this country, I would not be in civil resistance. If I was like Rishi Sunak and was treating this country like a flyover state, coming in and out, having like a legal residence in another country while setting the taxes for the British citizens, then I wouldn't be in civil resistance, right? So it's because, you be because you've made life. this country your home, which you're very entitled to do, and, and because you love this country and, as you pointed out earlier, have more morals than most of the people in this country, because you said those of us who have not taken this action don't have the same morals, that, that you, carry, you support and, and, and encourage the carrying out of criminal acts in this country? Well, given that the law is already being broken, like, every single day of the week by 
Conservative. So if any law is, I mean, that, that is disputed. Again, that's an opinion, not a fact. But if any law is being broken, then we can all just break any law. No, we have to be considerate, we have to be non-violent, but we need to take action, otherwise we are complicit in this. I'm it's very simple. I'm always intrigued by this non-violent thing. If I was walking past people spray-painting a building, even if I had nothing to do with it, I'm afraid I'm one of those busybody people. I'd probably tackle someone and wrestle them to the ground. Would that be acceptable? Uh, no. But you can come to one of our non-violence trainings and we can discuss this for eight hours. But so <laughs> you can go to YouTube and the and sign up for the next one. I'd, I'm not sure I could do eight hours of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I probably would start spray painting the room myself. Um, I'm, I'm just intrigued. Whenever we talk about non-violent, when people are committing criminal acts, if people try to stop you committing the criminal act, will you continue to be non-violent? Yes, absolutely. No, that's, that's good to know. Next to my Pasca building that's being spray painted. Um, just finally, um, as of today, after that spray painting of the wrong the wrong, well, certainly the wrong office, if not the wrong building of, uh, of the Labour HQ. Um, do you think anything's going to change? Well, that's up to all of us, right? Are you going to be planning any or be part of any... You're, I think you're on bail currently, are you not? Um, are, are, you, uh, are you going to be planning any... be getting involved in any other criminal acts? We will do whatever it non-violently takes to get the demand met. Like, we're not, we're not going to go home and watch Netflix. It's, it's inappropriate given the circumstances we're in. So no one should watch next watch Netflix while anyone is dying in Gaza. If we if we are in a position to do something about it, then we have a moral responsibility to do so. Have you have you thought of running for election and going through the political processes rather than just a criminal acts? The <laughs> our political system in this country is completely broken. There is no hope whatsoever. What's broken to, about it? Well, both of our, both of the parties that are running for government and are basically the only option that people have in front of them at this election are complicit in genocide. So it doesn't get more broken than that, does it? OK, we'll have to leave it there. Fascinating to talk to you, though. Chiara Sati from Youth Demand, uh, thank you for that. Um...